Hello, my name is Ellie. I'm a ceramicist and an actress living in Los Angeles and I'm going to tell you about how I started my pottery journey. Just to give you guys a little bit of a background if you don't know who I am. I have been making pottery for four years now. I pretty much started selling within a few months of making pottery and I have a little brand called Elva Ceramics. It's still very, very small. Everything I make is handmade. And I just want to tell you guys about how I got started because it's one of my biggest questions that I get on Instagram and maybe it will help you figure out how to start your own journey. So back in 2017, I moved to the US and I really wanted to start a new hobby. And I had been thinking about pottery. I told all my friends I was gonna do pottery. They'd given me a little bit of money as a gift to start pottery classes. But once I moved over here, I quickly realized how expensive everything was. And I decided that I didn't have time to fully join a pottery studio and pay a monthly membership. But I was going to do like a one-off wheel throwing class and just see if I liked it. And I did a one hour kind of bowl wheel throwing class. I really enjoyed it, but never ended up taking it up as a hobby. And then in 2019, I decided I was going to take one month off acting classes and join a four week introduction to wheel class, which I did at Pot in Echo Park. And I did that in December 2019 and I absolutely loved it. To be honest, I was pretty bad at it, but I had this kind of instinct for it and I really enjoyed the chaos of it and I really wanted, I just wanted to keep doing it. I thought in a few months I'll take the next level of classes. I'm just not ready to commit to something like that right now. And then let's cut to March 2020. So I don't really need to explain what was happening in the world then. Australia was closing its borders. I was deciding, where do I want to spend quarantine? And I decided to go home to Australia. I was going to be back in the US in three months. And uh, yeah, <laughs> I went home accidentally for two and a half years. Back in Australia by April, I was with a friend and we both had a lot of free time obviously because we were unemployed and uh, we decided to get a bag of clay together and have a hand building day so I bought some tools online bought a bag of clay from my local pottery studio that was open throughout all of lockdown which was cool called Brookvale Ceramics just told them I was like hey I was really shy I was like I'm gonna buy I'm gonna make clay with uh, my friend, what do we need? And, but we had that little clay play day and it was so much fun. I was pretty good at it. I kind of like started the journey in Australia for me. We're in May now. I had a bit of money saved up for the first time in years. It felt crazy to have a couple thousand dollars um, in my bank account again. And I wanna learn a new skill. I want something that's gonna be like a career kind of job or something that I can do alongside with acting. I landed on yoga teaching because they were doing online yoga trainings now so that I could get my certification online and the school that I really loved had opened that up and it was really affordable. So I was about to sign up to do that. I spent a few weeks thinking about it and right as I went to sign up for it, it was full. I had all this money that I wanted to spend. So I decided to go ahead and buy a pottery wheel which I bought on eBay for about, I think it was maybe 400 Australian dollars or 350. And it was very janky. It was a kid's wheel. <laughs> I wouldn't really recommend this wheel, but it was great for practicing at the beginning of my pottery journey. From there, every single day, I would just take myself into the garage of my, my parents' place and practice and make things and my flight back to America had been cancelled. Things just weren't looking great in the US and I didn't really want to rush back there. So I just kept making things. I put the first batch of things that I made on my Instagram, my personal Instagram. I had a friend say, hey, can I buy this? And I was like, oh, um, didn't think that it was money worthy that's you know I wasn't trying to sell it but I was like sure you can buy it at the time I was dating a guy that 
kind of worked in the ceramics industry you know gave me the confidence to sell it sell it at a price that he thought it was worth because it was handmade and because it was locked down i think people were spending more money on these kind of things so it just really set the bar very high for me in terms of how much I should sell for, what my worth was with ceramics. And I decided it was probably time to make another Instagram account because I didn't want to spam everyone on my personal with pottery. Um, so I made an Instagram called Ellie Makes Stuff. Originally I changed it to Elga Ceramics when I landed on a name. A lot of people think that my name is Elga, but it's actually Ellie. Elga is the first two letters of my first and last name. I liked it because I thought it sounded like Scandinavian and I liked that it didn't have any association with Billy Gaul, which is like my actor name. That's how my name came about, if anyone's wondering why my name is Elga. From there, I decided that I wanted to make a collection for the end of the year. The guy I was dating at the time helped me make some slip cast molds of a mug that I had made. And from there, I made about 60 mugs. By the end of the year, I did a little photo shoot with a friend of a friend. We became really good mates. She did this beautiful little photo shoot. It's so cute. And I called this collection Oopsie Daisy. And it basically, I don't know, it, it felt like a real like brand thing. And Jacinta is so amazing. I'm so glad that I got to work with her. But she has such a good eye for like visuals and she, she literally just came to my house and was like okay some clothes and she kind of just created this scene in my parents backyard I had my other friend come over and model it was awesome and it's just so, like now she's one of my best mates so it was really cool thanks Jacinta and Jules I basically sold that collection at a few markets I sold it on Instagram because one of my markets were cancelled because we went back into lockdown we love COVID and I sold all those mugs by um, the end of the holiday season, which was really cool. But I decided that I was probably ready to move out of my parents' garage, find a studio space for myself. I wasn't gonna be going back to the US anytime soon, so I thought I should probably move out in Sydney and live a young adult life with my friends in the city. I uh, ended up finding a studio space uh, and I think I paid like 65 a week or something, which is like so good. And from there I got to work on, you know, proper wheels and I had more space to create things in a better environment. I could recycle clay and it just kind of helped me improve so much at a much faster rate. And at this time I also was asked to teach pottery at one of the studios that I was buying at, which at first I was like, that's that's crazy, you guys want me to teach? Like, I'm, I'm not a teacher, I haven't been te making making pottery for very long. And they're like, no, just show them what you make and how you do it. And I'd started teaching at the beginning of 2021. And then by mid 2021, so about June, I believe, Australia, well, Sydney, went into lockdown again, and uh, New South Wales, I should say, and Victoria too. And because I was selling my work, I was going to like markets before COVID, maybe every like couple of months when I had enough stuff. I got to keep working at my studio because you were technically allowed to leave the house for work. So there are a few of us that sold our work and were working at the studio every day. Basically all I did for four months was just kind of go into the studio and make things, which was really awesome. I started making Instagram reels, which was cool and during that lockdown, I decided as a way to make a little bit of extra money that I was going to send out clay kits. So these clay kits had like a little ball of clay in them and some tools so that people could make things. And then I would go on Instagram live and people would just join in the live and make things with me. And I would sell the kits. I think I first sold them for like $10. Coming out of that lockdown, uh, the owner of my pottery studio offered me a job teaching at their studio. I obviously took that. It was a very big studio in Sydney. They had, they had three locations at one point. Now I believe they have two. I was so flattered and couldn't believe that they wanted me to teach there. That was kind of my journey up until the end of 2021. I kind of come out of the pandemic with this whole new career that I was not, I guess I was trying to make it happen 
when I think about how it happened, but I was really just trying to make things work from one thing to the next. You know, how can I make a bit of money doing this or how can I navigate things that are, you know, I can't go back to the US. There's not many acting jobs right now. Um, I don't want to get a restaurant job again. I can't go to markets right now because we're in lockdown. I can't teach in person right now because there's a lockdown. I opened a website. I guess it was the first time that I believed that I could make good money from pottery, which was really cool. And that became my main source of income for a little bit. That's kind of how things started for me in Australia over, I guess it was like a two year period. Now, what my advice looking back on that time to you would be if you're thinking about starting a pottery business, where do you start? How can you make money from this? What are things that you can do? The first thing I think that's so important is you need to be visible. You need to show people your work. Most of my sales at the beginning, well, they were friends and family just seeing my work. It took a really long time on the internet, like for strangers to buy my work. At markets, obviously you sell it to people that are strangers. That's more common because they can feel it, they can see you, they have some kind of interaction with you. But I have lots of friends and family in Australia, so that was good for me for a while. I also put my work up on Etsy. Etsy was a great way to sell my work and I used Etsy until I was ready to start my own website. Websites aren't cheap to run, my website cost me $40 a month so I wasn't about to just jump into doing that until I knew that it was right for me and I didn't start my website until over a year of me selling my stuff. So just something to keep in mind. Maybe don't jump into starting a website from the get-go. Some advice that I have if you're just starting out is it's okay if you don't know exactly what you want your style to be. Just show people, get it out there. If you can get into little craft markets, that's a great way to meet new people. Some things that I maybe wish I started earlier was an email list. I wish that I kind of had people that I could contact not through social media. Uh, another piece of advice would be um, video content. If you don't like making video content, then make sure you have really nice photos <laughs> because yeah, unfortunately, if you don't want to pay for marketing, then you kind of have to do it all yourself and show up. I hope you like this video. Thank you if you made it to the end. I really appreciate you watching it. Subscribe, thumbs up, leave me a comment if there's anything else you want me to cover or how many more videos maybe you'd like me to do. And that's all. Okay.